about the attacks from MSNBC, Chris Hayes attacking Dan Bedondi, and a real, a real journalist with real courage to get up and ask tough questions of the government. We see now in an article up on InfoWars from the Daily Caller, a reporter has just been detained by Capitol Police for trying to ask the EPA chief a question. How dare him ask the EPA chief a question? Isn't that amazing? It's a big issue. If Jake Tapper or an intern from the Daily Caller named uh, Finger asks a question, a real question, to uh, in a White House press conference, now if, if you go up and ask an EPA chief a question, you get arrested by the Capitol Police. That's the state of where we are in this country. And when they start talking about giving official journalists some kind of a shield, that's baloney. They're using that to shut down everybody except their mouthpieces. Now, I was just talking to Gerald Salenti, and, and Gerald, you brought up the issue of corporate fascism, corporatism, crony capitalism, whatever you want to call it, it's corruption. Listen to this story that Kit Daniels just put up on Infowars.com. An auto insurance company in California is tracking drivers by GPS and charging them per mile driven. Now, we've talked a lot about taxes per mile driven and how as they've pushed people to become more and more fuel efficient with gasoline, they're losing gasoline revenue. So they've got to keep those taxes on us. So now they're going to start with the black boxes, seeing how many miles we drive and taxing us by the mile. But they're not waiting for that. In California, they had the insurance commissioner there, Steve Posner, green-lighted a per-mile insurance pricing way back in 2009. Now it's happening. Here we are, five years later. We've got a California insurance company that is wirelessly sending mileage data to the insurance company that charges a base rate of two to five cents a mile. There we go. And can even record the route driven by the policyholder. They'll probably look at your speed and, and write you up and increase your insurance rates based on the speed you're driving to. Who knows what they can do? Because these guys are acting like the government, aren't they, Gerald? It's what we've seen with Obamacare. Obamacare is nothing but corporate fascism written to transfer massive wealth transfer from the American people to these corporate fascist insurance companies who've been in bed with the government for the longest time. We see it for the longest period of time in the automobile side, but now we're seeing it in healthcare, right? Yes, and, it's, and they're putting the, the small doctors out of business. The mm -hmm. conglomerates are all taking over, buying out doctors' businesses all over the country. And uh, you can no longer, just like there's no more retail stores virtually. I think we lost 65,000 retail outlets, private small businesses since 2008. Everything's being consolidated into the hands of the few. It's not that the government government is doing what the corporations want, the corporations are the government. Yeah. All the gang of 535, as senators and congressmen are, they're just the wise guys for the, for, the, for the corporations and the banks. Everything has been consolidated. It's slave landia. That's all it is. It, it bothers me a lot to, to, yeah, and Gerald, you know, it bothers me a lot to see this auto insurance situation here because when they were talking about forcing people to buy health insurance from the government, you had the liberals say, well, we've been forcing people to buy automobile insurance for a long time. What's the matter with that? I, I said, yeah, we shouldn't be forcing people to buy automobile insurance. Now they're charging people by the mile driven, and they're going to they're gonna basically put us out of our cars once they have self-drive cars. They're going to, to raise your rates so high you won't be able to drive a car anymore. You're going to have to buy one of their, if you want to afford the insurance, you're going to have to buy one of their self-drive cars. Well, again, you know, it's, it's the takeover. As I said, mm -hmm. when, when the bailouts first began, the too big to fails, the, the headline that we wrote when this first happened under Bush was <laughs> D.C. heist, Wall Street hijacks Washington. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a hijack. And all we are are we're the slaves in slave land here to keep their trip going. Look, when I was a young guy, there were no such thing as hedge funds. There were no private equity groups. There were no venture capitalists. This is all being monopolized by the hands of a few. Look at the numbers. What do you have in the United States? You have 400 people that are in control of $2 trillion. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we're just, we're just working, you know, we're just a... It is, this is better than a plantation economy because you don't even have to house or feed us. 
That's right. Look at the LIBOR scandal. Look what these guys can get away with. It's absolutely amazing. As bad as TARP was, as bad as everything that happened in 2008, 2009, they just keep piling on scandal after scandal. When we see this kind of stuff, when we see these kind of astronomical numbers of billions of trillions of dollars involved in these LIBOR scandals, what do you make of these banker suicides, Gerald? Well, you know, before we get on to that one, go on to the Forex. This is yeah. the currency market. Yeah. Five, three trillion dollars a day traded. And of course, there are those scandals going on as well. And then, of course, you know, before I get on to that, you asked me about gold before, and I talked about the stimulus that's going on now in China and the ECB. The point that I want to make David, that the more stimulus that they push in, the more they're going to be devaluing currencies. Mm -hmm. The more they devalue currencies, the higher the price of gold is going to go. So what's going on now is that China and the ECB are now fronting for the Fed. So the Fed say we're tapering while they're juicing on the other side. You know, yeah. so watch the fingers. They never leave the hand, you know? <laughs> so the same thing is going on. The banker suicides. Wall Street Journal just came out with a, uh, a story a couple of days ago about one of the bankers that committed suicide in London, from Chicago originally. And he was with Deutsche Bank. Mm -hmm. The car, these left multiple suicide notes. They, they will not <laughs> release them. Uh -huh. And in interviews by journalists, they're, they're hearing that the guy was freaking out because of the pressure on him that was mounting about the scandals going on behind the scenes. And again, these aren't, it's not fiction, a hundred million dollars worth of fines. These are criminal acts, but I got a better name for him. We're going to call it misdeeds. How about misselling? <laughs> yeah. How about misrepresented? You know, so, of course, these guys. and, if, and then Mistakes the real, were made. Mistakes were made, weren't they, Gerald? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to them. correct them. We're going to correct them. And so these guys are under pressure, obviously, when you read a story like that. But here's, the, but here's really the thing, David. How many more fines have to be paid how many much more of this corruption has to be exposed so what some more guys kill themselves there's no it's there in front of everybody now the yeah. facts are in front of everyone now to see what a criminal operation they call the banking system is oh yeah We've had a whistleblower from HSBC, and of course they were caught laundering a great deal of money for the drug cartels as well as for groups that have been identified as terrorist organizations by the American government. And they got this slap on the wrist, and the Eric Holder Justice Department said, oh, we can't really shut them down. They're too big, right? They're too big to jail. And at the same time they were doing that, they said, we're going to hire more people to watch these money transfers. And the whistleblower that we had was one of the people that they hired. And he said that they were putting stuff into their databases to make sure that certain keywords are not being flagged. So they would basically put a space in a word that would be a keyword or they put a period in the word to make sure that didn't happen. It was a joke. They continued doing the same thing they've been doing. Why? Because they've never been punished for it. Because Eric Holder is a joke. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. When he said too big to jail. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that if, if, if we clamp down on these big banks, it might destabilize the world economy, I tell you. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Yeah. So again, don't run a bus company with a family operation. Don't jaywalk. Mm -hmm. Don't speak. Oh, the other night, where we're out, we're driving. The cop... The, they pull us over. The woman had a bright light on. They'll bust your chops for anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, this is what we're paying for. We're, they turn this into a police state. It's fascism. And if the people, again, the elections are coming up, what are you going to vote for, the Republican gang or the Democratic gang? It's a two-party political mafia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've just seen just yesterday, we saw that the 
Republicans in the House started moving FISA reform to the Intelligence Committee away from the Judiciary Committee because the Judiciary Committee has been concerned about these civil liberties abuses. So they move it over to the guys who've been the cheerleaders for this kind of action all along. That's what we're seeing from the Republicans. That's what we see from people like Mike Rogers, Michelle Bachman, Boehner. These are guys who are writing the laws. These are guys who are aiding and abetting these criminals who are violating the Fourth Amendment for everybody, for everyone. Yeah, and again, look, I just read about Jimmy Carter. We did it in secret. Oh, they lied to us, right? Is that what you're saying, Jimmy? You know, and I, these guys, you know, they're always, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, what a bunch of hypocrites. What a hypocrite. How about a mass murderer, Jimmy? Could you yeah. handle that one? That's right. That's right. It's, it's very sad to see people who profess to be Christians so bloodthirsty. I remember when Ron Paul went to the Republican Party and got booed because he quoted Jesus. I mean, you know, these people wear their Christianity as, as, a, as a wolf wears sheep's clothing is the way they're wearing it. Yeah, so as we're looking at what's going on.